time for the only radio show of its kind. Auctioneers of antiques, collectors of cool, veterans of vintage. It's the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. For the next hour, enjoy great information about buying and selling antiques and collectibles and some interesting stories. Now, the Donnelly Auctions Hour. Welcome to the Donnelly Auctions Hour. Thank you for joining us. We are here every Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. I'm Susan, and I'm here with Randy Donnelly. Hi, Randy. Hey, Susan. We are the owners of Donnelly Auctions in Union, Illinois. We're just 60 miles west of Chicago, and we are here today to help you determine if you have any valuable items in your home that you may want to sell at auction. You got it. We're always looking for all kinds of fun stuff that you might have. And, uh, and again, we're out there on the road constantly. Well, yeah, let's tell them what happened this week with all of the new stuff that has come in. Thanks to our listeners out there, those of you who have called and emailed us already this week. We have some great items coming in that are going to be coming up in our April auction, which is April 27th, 28th, and 29th. Oh, Randy, you want to tell us a little bit about what's coming up? We, we have so many uh, uh, really great items you know, we've uh, amongst everything else, we've got a, a big clock collection that's going to be sold. And I'm told we've got a tall case clock, big grandfather's clock, that was actually owned by Joan Rivers, of all people. That's right. Uh, the, I remember you were comedian. saying, people don't even know who that is anymore. <laughs> well, I think you know, our listeners know who it may Joan be Rivers the age is. group of our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, I think we've got, what, about 50 clocks in this auction. And um, some really, really great pieces. But this Joan Rivers clock, incidentally, was was really interesting to me when you were pulling up some nuggets about uh, oh, Joan. Oh, Joan Rivers, when you said nobody knows who that is. I said, yeah, we, you know, I think we do. But so I looked up some fun facts about Joan Rivers. And here's something I thought was interesting. She collected Fabergé eggs. Uh-huh. She had several of them. She also wrote jokes for that show Candid Camera. Do you remember that? It started oh in 1948. Gosh, the old candid camera. Yeah, show. with yeah. Alan Funt. Yeah. But here's here's the one I love is uh, prior to her going on the QVC show, yeah, Shopping yeah. Network, she was $37 million in debt. And then over the 24 year period, she her fortune went to a billion dollars from the QVC oh, show. Oh, my. I know, goodness. right? Let's get that's, on that that's one. That's just crazy. But $37 million in debt, probably because she was collecting antiques. Fabergé eggs, maybe. Who <laughs> that, knows? That can and happen to you. And I, then also, she was the Celebrity Apprentice winner with Donald Trump in oh 2009. Goodness. I forgot all about that. A I remember Trumpster. seeing it. Wow. Yeah. Now, isn't it funny? I would not have thought of her as even being a Trump, you know, uh, person, but... But that's pre-presidential, that's too. That's pre-the-election, yeah. Yeah, So yeah. we'll see. But anyway, Joan Rivers, which leads us up to having provenance for items in your house. If you have something that belonged to somebody or was autographed by somebody, that Absolutely. just adds value. W- without a doubt, this clock will bring more because it was Joan Rivers. And, and of course, we can, we can prove all that with the provenance. What's it valued at? I don't know that. I do. Uh, <laughs> I did my homework. When it comes to money, <laughs> go to Susan. Um, she knows. It's a tall case Thomas Pot, P-O-T-T, not yeah. Thomas Potts with an S. It's a Thomas Pot musical clock, and we have it valued at fifteen dollars to $20,000. Wow, wow. And that will be in our April auction. Now, keep this in mind, though. There is no reserve on this clock. So if it goes for a lot less, you could get a really great bargain because it is here to sell with no reserve. That's right. This is an estate item. so uh, And the condition is good. We had a, one of our expert clock guys come course. in, and he says the condition is good for its age. Our clock guys from TikTok Clock, don't forget them. Uh, Alex, Jim, and Vicki, uh, they really do a great job. If you have clock repairs that you need done, especially grandfather clocks, they'll, they'll actually come out to your home and, and do it. That's TikTok Clock. Um, they're sponsors of ours always, and um, we use them highly. But let's get back to the April auction. I mean, there's so many uh, wonderful things. Uh, last week, we had David Ramey on our show, David Ramey Jr., who worked on all of our Nickelodeons that are going to be for sale this weekend in the auction. We've got jukeboxes for sale, that extremely rare Rockola 418. 1418. Ah, the Rockola 1418, so. yes. 
But I asked if there were any records in there, and you said, you know what, remind me to tell our listeners about Black Patty Records. Right. When we talk about records, in most cases, folks, your records are going to be unfortunately worthless. Um, yeah, no more records. Uh, you know, records, I, I mean, we sell records uh, by the box lot for, you know, $10 to $15. I mean, it just doesn't pay uh, to haul around records, unfortunately. But Black Patty, uh, P-A-T-T-Y, uh, there's the silhouette of a peacock on them. Uh, they were produced in Chicago in the 1920s for early black jazz artists. Oh. And these records are exceedingly valuable. I don't believe there's a black patty on the market that doesn't hit 1500 but they go up to $30,000 for a single record. Are you kidding? Right. So those are 78s, right? They are 78s. So those of you mm-hmm. go run to your milk crates right now and try to find a black patty, black patty, not black betty, black patty, patty records, P-A-T-T-Y. valuable mm-hmm. items. Again, things we want to get into your brain, everyone, that there are some valuable items out there you may have in your home. You know, uh, again, along with uh, jukeboxes and and uh, Nickelodeons that, that we have for sale uh, coming up in April. What's the date That's again? That's right. April 27th, 28th, and 29th. It's a three-day auction, and we're partnering with the Chicagoland Show in Grays Lake. Right. It's happening at the same time. So once they get done setting up and the show is over, people come out to Union, Illinois for our auction. So along with all these other items... We do have uh, vintage automobiles. Uh, So, again, we're always looking. Call us if you've got anything uh, sitting in your garage or warehouse that you would like to sell because we sell all kinds of vintage automobiles, whether it be a Model T or listen to this one, Susan. In this auction, we've got a 2003 convertible silver Mercedes Roadster, the SL55 AMG. What a cutie. It is a beautiful car, Mm -hmm. so cars don't have to be antique to be collectible and very sought after. That's right. This Mercedes uh, will will be selling this weekend. We have several Mercedes and and, uh, other vehicles in in this collection. So go to DonleyAuctions.com. You'll be able to view everything online. Um, I'm sure uh, today we already have these these items That's up correct. online. And those so. ca- the cars, we have 11 vehicles that will come up on Friday night, April 28th. So we try to do it after everybody's off work. Come on out to the auction. We'll have some food and drinks. And that's that's an unusual for us to do an evening auction. We do evening auctions in April and November, uh, but it's a fun time to come out. Come to the auction. But remember, the day before, we've got Sean Thompson as a special guest here at our auction gallery, that's who will right. be there for preview. On Wednesday, the 26th, is the preview for the auction. So you can come out, look at the auction. We encourage everyone to take a drive out to Union, Illinois, from noon until 7 p.m., but from 4 to 7, Mr. Sean Thompson will be there live yeah, broadcasting his radio he's show. broadcasting his live radio show right treat. from the Donnelly Auctions. And we've got another guest who's going to be there, uh, Evil Knievel's, uh, oh, yeah. uh, is it his daughter or granddaughter? Granddaughter. Okay. Um, she will be there because uh, we're actually selling an Evil Knievel pinball machine, and uh She's coming uh, out to do a photo shoot with it, so yeah. I'm not sure if, you know, if she'll be there for it's my understanding meet and greet she kind will of a be. thing. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. Wow, you never know what's going to happen at Donnelly Auctions. Again, the April auction is our spring classic, 27, 28, 29. We are closed and taking further consignments for this one. Is that correct? Well, we're already building up for the next one, though, say, so you have to for call or email us because we are looking for merchandise for upcoming auctions all the time. Phone number, 815 815- Nine two three seven thousand. Call us. However, what we're going to do when you do call us is say email us at consign at donleyauctions dot com and send us photos. Just a little bit of information. That way, we can see right away if it's something we can take for auction. If it's something we are going to tell you, you might want to keep that in the family. But we'll give you direction. We'll sure. get you off dead center to downsize. And a reminder, Donley is the, spelled the simple way, D-O-N-L-E-Y. Right. There's no double L's or E's Sign at yeah. DonleyAuctions.com. Send us some information and we'll we'll take it from there. And uh, actually uh, today and tomorrow, um, we're set up at the Grays Lake Flea Market, 
So if you want to meet us in person, come on down to the Grays Lake Flea Market. It's Lake County, right? Yeah, Lake Lake, County. Lake County. But it's in Grays Lake. Okay. Great. And we're going to be there. You bet we are. Who wants to meet us? Come on, listeners. Come on. Some, say, uh, we heard you on the Donnelly Auctions Hour radio show. I'll have a special gift for you. Uh oh. <laughs> Not careful. sure what that is yet, but I'll find something. <laughs> so, uh, we will be set up there and uh, looking for more consignments. If you've got a big collection, don't hesitate to get a hold of us because now's the time. That's right. And it's never too late to consign with us. We'll also be talking later in this segment about how to bid at the auction. But coming up next, we're going to have a special guest because we want to now turn our focus to military items because we have a military auction coming up in May. Don't go anywhere. You are listening to the Donnelly Auctions Hour right here on AM 560, The Answer. been called auctioneers of antiques, collectors of cool, even veterans of vintage, and they can introduce themselves. Thanks for listening. This is the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. Welcome back to the Donnelly Auctions Hour. You're here today with Susan and Randy Donnelly of Donnelly Auctions in Union, Illinois. And like I said before, we're here today to help you determine if you have any valuable items in your home that you might want to sell at auction. So we have a special guest today, Randy. His name is David Hilp. He's from LaGrange, Illinois, and he is our military expert who comes in and helps describe the wonderful items we have. Hi, David. You there? Yes, I am. Hi, David. Hey, Welcome to the me. show. Thanks for Thank your you for time. And, and David, my goodness, uh, we we must know each other, what, 30, 40 years? Yeah, I'd, I'd say at least, at least I think we figured it out to be 35 years at least. Yeah. <laughs> How did you wow. become a military expert, David? Tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. Um, well, I was um, you know, born in the city of Chicago and ended up moving out to LaGrange when I was in sixth grade. But as a kid, I liked playing Army, and I thought part of the whole thing was looking like an Army soldier. So when my parents, who were into antiques, would go out to uh, flea markets and antique shows and antique shops, I loved tagging along because that's where I could find a helmet or a uniform and then when I found out that we fought Germany twice in 30 years and just got interested in World War I and World War II. And, I, and starting at age seven, I, I started collecting and finding stuff, and I've been collecting ever since. You were collecting at age seven? Yes. Wow, most kids are yeah. outside riding their bikes. And, and you know, I, I think I, I started at about 11 uh, years old. So, um, so you got into it even earlier than I did. And, and the same thing, I, I used to do the same thing. I, I used all my military equipment actually to outfit the kids in the neighborhood. I did the same thing. Yeah. You guys <laughs> you know, are we popular. Made jer- uh, made jer- here's jer- a, an interesting thing you'd never get away with today. When, when we played Army, my father just took the bolts out of these old uh, military rifles, and we all, all the kids in the neighborhood, we used real guns, especially the little Italian Carcano rifles, because they were so small, those little carbines. And um, and they didn't break. I mean, you could drop them. You could beat them up. I mean, they had gone through a war. So kids, for God's sakes, weren't going to ruin them. But imagine kids today running around with guns in the neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> no. You know. Yeah, it's, it's a Maybe different world. Maybe in role. Chicago, but not. It, it not certainly by is. So, you know, what, uh, you know, all the years we've been collecting, David, uh, what do you see right now as being some of the hottest uh, items uh, for for people to look for. Now, the purpose of this show is always to tip people off. Here's what could be valuable. Here's what you have, and um, so give us a call if you've got any of these things. So, wh- what's what's your thoughts? What's the thing people should be looking for? Sure. When, when I'm just talking to collectors, and I just I just ask this question. It's uh, military guns. You know, there's a whole new generation of, of young people that are, have played Call of Duty and and they're they've seen a, a German K98 rifle or they've seen a German Luger or a uh, you know an M1 Garand rifle. And I would say between World War One and World War Two uh, weapons that it, that is on fire with interest. And because we're finally getting that next generation, it's not just not a bunch of old guys in their 50s to, to their 80s. It's now guys in their 20s and 30s that are collecting and really moving the hobby a, a lot. Well, that's good to know because we do have a firearms, ammunition, and military auction coming up May 20th and 21st. So now is a great time if any of our listeners out there have any antique 
firearms with some history to them even would be great. Well, and as, as David said, it doesn't have to be the old antiques, you know, like the Wild West type stuff. Right. But uh, military is, is always, all, always hot in, in, in firearms. And we do carry our own FFL, Federal Firearms License. So give us a call at 815-923-7000, and we'll give you the next steps on how to safely transport them, or we can come pick them up from your location. Give us a call, and we'll work with you on that. Well, especially widows out there. Uh, this happens all too often. Um, the people die, and and the widows normally are, are stuck with, what do I do with this? Right. You know? our, our new tagline is, we're your guys when your husband dies. Yeah. Don't forget Donley Auctions. <laughs> So those, that's a great item. Uh, talk about, David, you know, or the uh, David, military guns. Talk to me a little bit about uniforms, uh, uh, you know, groupings of, of uniforms. Back when I collected, all anybody wanted was German and Japanese. And now American stuff is just, again, on fire, to use your words. Correct? I would agree. I would, in fact, the whole thing was it used to be a guy, uh, somehow a, a, a veteran would pass and his stuff would be divided up from a guy who just collected medals, just collected helmets, just collected uniforms. And now in the last 10, 10 15 years, there's this realization is it's a grouping. If it has his name on it, you keep it together. You don't you separate keep, it, right. No, you keep the dog tags with the uniform, with the, do, the discharge papers, and it, it tells a story. And there's a lot of collectors that are willing to take up space in their house with just one guy's or one woman's stuff Um and because it tells the story, and that's the way that uh, this, the, the hobby's evolved, where it's, you know, the guys are really doing their research and looking up names that are on the insides of uniforms and, and documenting who these people are. You know, uh, I always tell this story that, uh, you know, it's not that long ago, about a, a year or two ago, um, I saw an American, an American helmet, a GI helmet, sell for $25,000. Now, that certainly is the exception. But but I remember uh, again as a kid, American helmets. Oh, nobody wanted them. I mean, ten ten dollars would have been way too much to pay for an American <laughs> helmet, you know. But, but we do have in this May auction is the bomber jacket grouping of Burton Spring, and that came in from one of our from one of our listeners, our, our in listeners Montana. who called in from Montana. Thank you. Um, so uh, talk a, a little about that grouping. I mean, you saw that grouping. What what do you think? I did. Uh, you know, well, it's it's documented. It's, you know, it's a it's a, a leather flight jacket, the iconic A2 jacket, and the veteran and, and his uh, squadron. They pick a guy who has the most talent artistically, and he'll paint the insignia of the squadron on the back of the jacket. And those jackets, a lot of times over the years, they, they're pr- kind of fragile, and the, and the ki- the kids of the veterans wear them, and they wear out, and they get thrown away. So finding a good leather flight jacket, the iconic leather flight jacket of World War II, you know, like you put your aviator glasses on, you got the cool leather jacket that your dad wore in World mm-hmm. War II. In fact, there was a time in the 80s when I was talking to uh, kids that were little uh, that were wearing their their uh, parents or grandparents leather flight jackets. I say don't do don't wear them because they're going to wear out. But this grouping that's going to be a Donnelly, um, it's 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 thoroughly impressive. It's it's got paperwork. It, it tells about the story about the gentleman and in, and there's and anybody who acquires it, it's just juicy with it with yeah, additional yeah. research that's out there. Now uh, leather flight jackets uh, again for our listeners if they if they have a. Uh, leather flight jacket at home, even if it's plain, even if it's just a plain jacket, um, they, they go into the, the mid hundreds. But but it's not unusual when you start seeing the painting on it and everything for a leather flight jacket to be able to go into the thousands. Correct. Well, if I remember correctly, you've had a, uh, some jackets that have, have hit the thousands that were painted. So, well, uh, 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 if they've got naked ladies on them, that's the favorite <laughs> of collectors. Uh, I've sold over the years leather flight jackets for five thousand uh, dollars, right, right at our auction hall. That's uh, uh, you know, so so folks out there, leather flight jackets and and paratrooper groupings. Oh my goodness, the crazy money. Uh, out there for paratrooper groupings right now. Yep, it started with uh, Saving Private Ryan, and then when uh, Spielberg and Tom Hanks did the series uh, of Band of Brothers, it just took uh, a hobby that already had a great deal of interest uh, of airborne paratrooper items and just sent it to the moon. And and now we got a whole new generation of kids that are watching that series of uh, Band of Brothers and. Um, from the jump jackets to the boots to the uniforms, the dog tags, paperwork, 
uh, it's 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 really just uh, um, uh, at a premium right now as far as co- collector interest. And and we're talking extremely serious money. And w- when I'm talking money, folks, I'm saying ten thousand, fifteen thousand. At, at Donnelly Auctions, we actually sold a grouping uh, last year at, at our auction for thirty thousand dollars. So. This is this is serious money and cash. You need to find out what you've got in your attics, your basements, all this stuff stored away. And foot we, lockers, yeah, check out. And Open we those make foot it lockers. fit in your wallet. That's, That's another right. one of our taglines. So keep that in mind. Our next auction, we are taking consignments right now for military, firearms, and ammunition. The auction is May 20th and 21st. Give us a call at 815-923-7000. And, David, can you stick with us for the next segment? I'd like to hear more stories about some of the other groupings we have coming up in May. Sure, I can okay. do that. Stay with us. And then what we also also request is just email us at consign at donleyauctions.com. Send us some photos. Tell us what you have, where you're located. We'll work with you on next steps. If we come out there, you can come drop it off with us. Either way, we'll help you out with what you need to do. Yeah, we'll, we'll and, tell you if it's valuable or not. But uh, but don't hesitate to to ask us to come out for uh, a free appraisal. And that's right. Stick with us. You are listening to the Donley Auctions Hour right here on AM five sixty. The answer. You're listening to the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. Welcome back to the Donnelly Auctions Hour. You're here with Susan and Randy Donnelly of Donnelly Auctions in Union, Illinois. We have our special guest here today, David Hilp. He's one of our military experts with our auction company. Hi, David. Hello. <laughs> well, welcome back. And, you know, we, we were talking about, you know, what's hot in, in collecting in, in military relics and everything. And, and one thing I, I wanted to thank our, our listeners for is actually listening. I, in one of our last uh, shows, I was asking for military vehicles and, and cannons and, and big items. And, and of course, uh, lo and behold, a, a gentleman does call us with a cannon and it was sitting out in his garden. And, uh, David, tell us what you've learned about this cannon. Okay, so I'm still in the process of uh, examining it and, and figuring it out, but it, it appears to be a, a small German-made cannon that was uh, end up being exported to Argentina, the Argentine military before World War I. And what's really great about it is it's it's small. It's like even like a baby cannon, and it really has a great look to it. And it was used for being able to take into the mountains, that, so you could fight in uh, in the mountain regions of Argentina and Chile. And it's made by Krupp. Yes, the a German company Krupp, and uh, Krupp was uh, making cannons for the Germans, and they were making cannons for other countries. If you needed a cannon, they'd make one for you. Or so, make a bunch of them. So it's always again so interesting what what our listeners do have. So definitely check your your gardens. Uh, <laughs> not <laughs> not only your gardens, garden. but, but you know we we've also bought uh, field pieces and tanks and all kinds of things uh, right from uh, Legion halls that have been closing up over the years. So again, you just don't know what's out there. But these these pieces are, are so often people worry about them being legal. The United States government did allow the importation of these type of things uh, during the war time, uh, and it was a, a big deal to collect a war souvenirs. That's so, great. Yeah, so definitely give us a call at 815-923-7000. We'll give you direction and next steps if you have any wonderful military relics that you'd like to put up for auction. But, David, I also heard you have a story about the Battle of the Bulge. Yes, uh, there is a grouping that came in to Donnelly Auctions, and uh, as I was researching it, it's just uh, you know very very sad, very uh, heroic. It's a, a guy who was an uh, air, airborne guy, Battle of the Bulge. Uh, later in the battle, later phase, uh, he sees a guy shot in the throat who's out uh, ahead of them as they're defending Bastogne. He runs out, uh, makes a, a, a trachea out of a tube that he had in his pocket, saved the guy's life, got the Distinguished Service Cross, second to the Medal of Honor, later on got the Silver Star, and sadly, uh, within a week and a half, he was also killed, and we also have his Purple Heart and the paperwork from the government, and it's just just 
um, sad and important, and that's the kind of things that people want to acquire to respect and display and, and show the valor of, of the era. You know, that's that's so true. Uh, these gentlemen that uh, have fought, gentlemen and women, men and women alike, have fought to save this country are such heroes. And war souvenirs and military collecting is that. It's all about preserving the history of what these heroes have done for us to make this country what it is. That's right. So if you have one item or an entire collection, we'll be happy to talk to you about it. Give us a call, 815-923-7000, or you can email us at consign at donleyauctionswithaness.com. And, you know, I want to always throw this out there, a shout-out to our, our lawyers uh, who are, are working, you know, through estate work and everything that they can call us. We're always happy to to work with estates and, and executors because so often the, one of the reasons these things come on the market is unfortunately due to death. Right. Uh, and there's so many large collections in the Chicago and suburbs. And, and as you know, we don't only hang out in Chicago. We're all over the country. That's right. And David, before we let you go, is there anything else you can tell our listeners about what's valuable today? What kind of items we should be looking for? Sure. One one thing is that, you know, when we talk about people that were airborne or, you know, that, that, that died in service, how many times has it been that people have brought things to Donnelly Auctions and they just said, well, my dad served, my grandfather served. They never know the stories. They think they're just, it's humdrum. And then you, you, you see, open up a box and you see some fantastic stuff and you have the kids and the grandkids says, dad never talked about it. You know, either souvenirs they brought back or what they did in the service. I just talked to a woman whose uh, father got the Silver Star in the Korean War, and she uh, said, Dad never talked about it. I barely knew he received it. Wow. You know, so there's a, there's a lot wow. of people out there that may have said, oh, he was just on a ship or he worked in an office, and they still have a story. They still have things that have uh, that collectors want. Yep. There, That's right. So groupings with provenance, uniforms, helmets, insignia, what else? Medals. Edge, edge weapons edge are weapons. always hot, especially daggers. and Bayonets. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. Big yes, money. Absolutely. Now's the time. Now's the time to consign with Donley Auctions. We'll help you downsize and we'll help you make it fit in your wallet. You're listening to the Donley Auctions. We're here every Saturday at 1 o'clock on AM 560, The Answer. Don't go anywhere. We're going to continue talking about hidden treasures you may have in your home, garage, basement, attic that we can help you out with. Give us a call at 815-923-7000. Also, mark your calendars for Wednesday, April 26th. Sean Thompson live at Donley Auctions oh, in Union, Illinois. Fun, isn't it? It's on my calendar. I think my calendar is even going to notify me when he gets here. So keep that in mind. We hope to see everybody out at the auction in April. Don't go anywhere. We're going to talk some more. More of the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. We are back with the Donnelly Auctions Hour. I'm Susan, here with Randy Donnelly of Donnelly Auctions in Union, Illinois. I want to thank David Hilp, our military expert and consultant, for joining our show today. Yeah, I've known him since he was a teenager. I know, right? <laughs> I just, I'm just i just now getting to know him. It's been a joy working with him on the military relics that we have. So now's the time to consign. We're here today to help you Determine if you have any hidden treasures in your home that you'd like to put up for auction and downsize. Downley Auctions is here to provide that service for you. Now, I, I want to remind everyone, too, that we are right now out at Gray's Lake Flea Market. So if um, uh, if you want to come and see us, we're here uh, today yet. Uh, what will the flea market's on and Sunday. So uh, come out and see us. At, That's uh, right. We'll have a booth. We do have a booth set up there mm-hmm. for the weekend. Come see us. Auctions. And uh we want to make sure everyone is aware of our April Spring Classic coming up, April 27th, 28th, and 29th. It's one of our biggest auctions of the year. It, it is. And, you know, Susan, you had mentioned earlier that uh, we've actually closed on, on taking merchandise for that auction. But but that doesn't mean stop calling because we need right. – <laughs> we're already filling up the next auctions. And one of the biggest things that we're looking for for one of our next auctions is – 
porcelain signs. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness, the value of porcelain signs. And these are easily things that you have, you know, in a garage, a warehouse, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But we're always looking for all kinds of signs. They don't have to be big. I mean, some small, you know, porcelain signs or or neon signs, only a, a couple feet square or what have you, right on up to the big marquees that were in front of buildings. That's years right. Ago. Oh, I'd love to get some of those too. But we have about uh, 50 to 100 coming up in April, advertising mm-hmm. signs, some of those Pam clocks, just such a great eclectic variety of things in our spring classic. And, and I love the way people keep calling us uh, with, with merchandise, too. You know, I mentioned on one of our last shows that, that we have this great uh, Victorian uh, cast iron chandelier, an, an eight-arm chandelier. And lo and behold, what happens? <laughs> I get a phone call from a, uh, a gentleman who says, well, guess what, Randy? I've got a 12-arm. Oh. And, oh, my goodness, <laughs> uh, we sure ran out to get that because those – Cast iron uh, 12 arms are really, really scarce. Yeah, I saw those. We have several hanging up already coming up in April, as well as table lamps, yep. those leaded glass lampshades, Tiffany and, style, and stained yeah. glass windows and doors, and all kinds of great architectural pieces. Yeah, in, in fact, uh, I will be talking to a, a gentleman who uh, said he actually has windows, leaded windows, out of a Frank Lloyd Wright home. Oh, wow. When is that coming in? Well, I don't know Soon, yet. We've got to talk to them. You know, even people, um, young, newly married folks who are doing all their own renovations, boy, do we have some great stuff for uh, homes and the younger generation of people trying to decorate. Yeah. We've got some great stuff. I, you know, I, I love the, the carousel horses that we have in, in this auction because they're old, unrestored. Unrestored ones, right. You know, there there's two different ways to collect. A lot of people like stuff that's all you know, pristine, uh, yeah, and perfect, yeah, repainted and, and, and ready to go. Yeah, and that looks good. I mean, I like that. But I, I sometimes love the history, the way it looks. You know, mm-hmm. now after a hundred years of use, and these old, I've got uh, ten uh, uh, carousel horses coming up in the April auction, April twenty seventh through 29th. and they're again all old and beat up, and the paint worn off of them and everything. And there's I just saw a couple something. hooves laying on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> some of them some are of them need missing repair. pieces. Yeah, but, but that's uh, the beauty of them. It, it really is. I mean, so people just don't so... have to consign items to us that are in perfect condition. That's right. what we're saying here is it can be old and rusty gold. You know, we've got a, a bar, a huge bar and back bar. If you're opening up a new location, uh, if, you, if you want uh, to decorate a, a new bar or restaurant, with an outstanding bar and back bar. We have one that is so unusual because it's really more arts and crafts mm-hmm. than it is, you know, the, the Baroque style. It's like you know, leaded glass 1890s. on it, too, it looks it like. It does yeah. have leaded glass on it, and it's uh, about 26 foot long. It's a wow. bin, 10 foot high. I mean, this is a, a big saloon bar and, and back bar. And then we've got an old soda fountain bar. We've got a barbershop back bar. Some really, again, fun stuff in this April auction. That's right. So if you think about it, everything coming up are items you can put in your house. The jukeboxes, the the saloon doors. Yeah. All, the chandeliers, all, all the lamps. I, I mean, we have some furniture. How about that dining room set that just uh, came in yesterday? Man, Holy cow. You know, we don't take furniture normally. This is no IKEA furniture, folks. <laughs> Furni- oh, there's nothing wrong with IKEA. Mm. <laughs> it's a different style. Come I on. I know. That's true, but we don't want anybody painting this either. No. Yeah, and, <laughs> and this great. has got all kinds of uh, carving on it with uh, winged griffins and just lion's heads. I mean, it's just such a great, great uh, He has piece. like five leaves in it. I think more than that, yeah. It's this thing huge. is huge. Um, and it's got all the pieces with it and everything. So when we say we don't take furniture, we actually do if it's great furniture. It's got to be the good stuff, yeah, yeah. for mm-hmm. sure. So we have that. We've got, what else? Uh, the vehicles. we got motorcycles, a couple boats, yeah. boat motors. Yeah. I mean, it's really a great stuff. auction, folks, if you can come out. Again, we're just trying to trigger in your mind also things we're looking for for our next auction and it's never too soon to consign with us leave us an email at consign at donley d-o-n-l-e-y auctions.com give us a call at 815-923-7000 
Mark your calendars for the April Spring Classic. Mark your calendar for Wednesday, April 26th for the Sean Thompson Show live from 4 to 7 p.m. Free admission. We've got plenty of seats. Come on out and see us and view the auction while you're there. You're listening to the Donley Auctions Hour. Don't go anywhere. We're not done yet. Every Saturday at 1 o'clock on AM 560, The Answer. The Donnelly Auctions Hour continues now on AM560, The Answer. We are back with the Donnelly Auctions Hour. Susan and Randy Donnelly here talking about items you may have of value in your home, basement, attic, garden. (laughs) How about in your garden? Yeah. (laughs) We have some great auctions coming up. I know we talk a lot about that and consigning to us and helping you downsize and legally transporting firearms. You want to touch on firearms real quick one more time you know i i just want to keep reminding the people out there uh, because i know it's such a sensitive subject and people are they're, they're paralyzed they're paralyzed when, not sure when what they to do when they inherit a, a collection uh or a, a husband dies mm-hmm. and, uh, and the, little did they know how many he had oh my god <laughs> usually it's a surprise time and time again yeah uh, and i mean we're not talking collections of of five or ten firearms sometimes it's 200, 300, 400 guns all, all in a home. What do you do? These, you call us. These are, are the things that we can help you with and doing it legally and getting you top dollar. That's, That's right. That's the main thing. We do have buyers from all over the world looking at our firearms auctions and all of our auctions, really. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you want to talk to me in person, uh, first, I'll always come out to the home uh, and, and be happy to consult with you. But I, I am set up right now. <laughs> now, as we speak, I'm set up at the Grays Lake Flea Market. Um, and, you know, I'll be there today and tomorrow. That's right. Come look for us, Susan and Randy Donley with Donley Auctions. We'd love to meet you. Some people just aren't wanting to email or give us a call. Come see us instead. We'd love to meet you. Well, and if they're like me, they don't have... Uh, the skill sets <laughs> you on, do. The, on the computer. You just don't want to do it. But anyway, real quick, that's how you can sign with us. We try to keep the process simple because we're going to make that collection fit into your wallet. But what if you're still collecting? We're trying to encourage some of the younger generation. Come on out. There's some great, valuable items out there you can invest in. So let me tell you a little bit about how to bid at an auction. First of all, come see us. Come live. Come sit down at a table. Grab yourself a bottle of water. We'll always have complimentary lunch and coffee and donuts. It's so easy to bid live. No admission fee. People ask us that. Just come in, give you, give us your driver's license, register to bid, and we give you a bidding card. From there, it's up to you whether you raise it or not. <laughs> so be careful with your bidder number. Uh, then if you can't make it out, or if you even want to come out for the preview but can't stay, everybody's busy. The weather's yeah, getting yeah. nice. We, you know, it's hard to stay there all day. You can put in what's called an absentee bid. Mm-hmm. And that's something we probably need about, you know, the day before the auction. And you put in your maximum bid on a form with the lot number. Give us your credit card number. And it's really just bidding on your behalf. Up as to, if up you were there live. As if you yeah. were there live. Mm-hmm. Up to your maximum. The last way to bid at an auction is via the phone. And usually, usually you'll get myself or one of my other uh, staff members on the phone with you while you're driving or you're at the baseball game with your family. We've had people at weddings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing phone bids with them. And then I would just bid on your behalf and make sure the auctioneer hears your your bid. But you need to let us know 24 hours in advance. And we usually do phone bids for items over $500 in right. value. Yep. And a lot of the stuff coming up in our April auction, 27th, 28th, 29th, just some great eclectic items for Every price range. And don't forget, Sean Thompson will be there during the preview on Wednesday, April 26th. Come on out to preview the auction. We'll walk through all these steps and, with and you. And he's going to actually be doing his show live, remote, at our location. That's right, from 4 to 7. So if you have any questions, give us a call at 815-923-7000. Come see us at the flea market. Email us at consign at donleyauctions.com. Come visit us, folks. We'd love to meet you. You're listening to the Donley Auctions Hour here on AM560. I'm Susan. And I'm Randy Donley. And And we'll we'll see you at at the the auction. auction. 
Thanks for listening to the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. Check out all the latest information on upcoming auctions and collectibles at DonnellyAuctions.com. And while you're there, you can contact someone about buying or selling your collectibles or estates. That's DonnellyAuctions.com. 